Hey, my name is Jacob and this is Jacob Eats Good. Today, I'm gonna make some poke. Poke leans really heavily on having a high quality piece of fish. This piece of fish is really fresh. It was caught just a few days ago by one of my friends. And besides having a really good fresh piece of fish, you're gonna to wanna to have a really sharp knife and good ingredients. Keep this dish simple, stick to these basics, and you're gonna have a great bowl of poke that's gonna keep you wanting to make it over and over again. You're never gonna be able to go to a poke shop again, just like me, and you're gonna realize that it's so much better to make it home. Okay, everyone, let's get started making my favorite thing to eat. So I'm gonna get started with one small serrano pepper. I like to use the serrano pepper. It adds a little bit of heat, a little bit of freshness to the dish. I'm a pretty big spicy guy and uh, I just like what it brings to the party. If that's not your thing, if you're not into the spice, feel free to omit this. Totally optional, just something I really like. From there, we're gonna move on to a knob of ginger. I'm gonna use about a one inch piece of ginger. Uh, peel that off and then cut that into nice thin planks. Once you have that cut into nice thin planks, turn it and then cut it into little batons. Maybe cutting those are half or in thirds, depending how big you want your final piece of ginger to be. Once you have that done, I'm gonna take a few green onions here and cut them on a slight bias. Um, I do that because I'm biased and I think it looks a little better. <laughs> um, anyways. Once you get those into the bowl, save back maybe a quarter of them to garnish later. And on top of this, we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients for our poke dressing. So I like to use a pretty simple recipe that does a ratio of about three to one soy sauce to toasted sesame oil. If you're using non-toasted sesame oil, maybe you can go two to one soy sauce to sesame oil. And be careful not to add too much of either. Um, the sesame oil can be really overpowering. Too much soy sauce can be too salty. So I have probably about a pound of fish here and I'm using three tablespoons of soy and a little over a tablespoon of this sesame oil. And now to that, I'm gonna add maybe a quarter teaspoon of sambal. I think this adds a nice depth of saltiness and vinegariness to the dish that I really miss when it's not in there. So I like to add it in there, um, even if I already have that jalapeno for spiciness. Now you're gonna add just a little bit of sesame seeds. I'm gonna use both black and white here. This is really just for appearance. Um, I think the black ones might have a little more texture, but besides that, this is just gonna make your dish a little prettier at the end and uh, you eat your eyes first. So something to think about. Once you have that all in the bowl, just stir that up and place it aside for the next few minutes while you get your fish ready. This fish has hopefully been sitting in your freezer for maybe 10 to 30 minutes to get it a little firmer. Uh, this will help you cut it up if your knife isn't super, super razor sharp, but even with a sharp knife, I like to do this trick. Uh, it gives you more consistent cuts. Uh, it gives you nice straight edges on your fish and uh, I think it's really helpful. Anyone who knows me knows this is something I'm passionate about. I love tuna. Tuna is something that I would eat every day. It's something I eat multiple times a week, especially in the summer when I have access to it. I've been a fisherman my whole life. It's what got me started cooking, and this dish really means a lot to me as it's really helped to shape me as a cook. And I'm gonna start by cutting it right along this natural seam. This is gonna give you a nice straight edge to cut planks off of this piece of fish. These planks are gonna be a easy way for you to cut a consistent cube for the poke shape, which the word poke just really refers to this cube shape. So once you get these all cut into planks, turn them and cut them into long strips. At that point, you can turn them another 90 degrees and cut them into small cubes. I like to do a pretty small cube, as you'll see here. A lot of pokey shops will do a much bigger dice on their fish. The bigger dice will hold up better to time spent in the cooler, time in the fridge um, as they're waiting to sell it or you're waiting to eat it. So if you're making this ahead, go ahead and cut these a little bigger than I'm doing this here. Uh, the size that I'm doing here, this will be ready pretty much immediately, which is what we're trying to do here because I am hungry to eat this. Now, if you're catching this fish yourself, um, once again, be sure to take really good care of your fish. Gill and gut it immediately, get it bled, uh, get it cold, uh, get filleted, get the bloodline off, and get it vacuum sealed if you're not gonna eat it right away. Uh, these are really important steps to giving you a really good bowl of poke never wash your fillets in fresh water. So 
So we'll get that all in the bowl and give it a nice stir. At this point, press a piece of plastic onto the surface so your fridge doesn't smell like poke and your poke doesn't smell like fridge. Put this in the fridge for uh, at least 10 to 30 minutes, uh, maybe up to an hour with the size that I cut this fish. Any longer than that, I find that it can start getting mushy. Any less than that, I find you don't get the full flavor into the middle of your fish. Now at that point, I like to pull it out and add a little bit of avocado just gonna add a little richness and fattiness to this dish. I like to do this at the end because it keeps the avocado nice and bright green, which really helps your presentation. Uh, as if this sits in the fridge for an hour with the avocado, you're probably gonna lose a little bit of that vibrantness and it might end up with a little more uh, brown dull color. Um, I use a butter knife because I like my fingers. I see too many people cut themselves. I'm scared when I'm at people's house and they're using giant knives to cut their avocados and I just think they're gonna cut off their fingers. It's not necessary, uh, as I have proved here. Uh, give it a try and uh, fear be gone for cutting avocados forever. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get yourself a nice bowl and put a good scoop of sticky sushi rice on there. Sushi rice is a simple thing. Maybe I'll go into that further, but that's another video. Next to that sushi rice, go ahead and plate up a nice big portion of this poke. Don't put yourself too little, you worked hard. You deserve a nice big bowl of poke. On top of that, uh, add that last little bit of avocado if you so choose. Uh, a little bit more of the sesame seeds, the green onions as well on top. I like to, at this point, add a little bit of rice seasoning or furikake on top, which is just a blend of bonito flakes and nori and some sesame seeds. This is going to add a nice like oceany sweetness to your poke. It's another little dimension that I think can really be helpful in the final product. Drizzle on a little bit of soy sauce and there you have it. Dig in, enjoy this dish, uh, make it again and again. Go fishing, make friends that go fishing. Um, yeah, cheers guys, enjoy.